Hi, I'm Brian from Brian Outdoors, and in this video we're going to be talking about fly fishing in Alberta for cutthroat trout, rainbow trout, and bull trout. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be able to go uh, fly fishing in Alberta with two good friends of mine, Tom and Dave. Uh, Dave Towers is actually the uh, owner and rod builder for the Livingston Rod Works. He builds rods um, specifically for uh, rivers in the western part of Canada, such as the Livingston River, the Highwood River, uh, rivers that have uh, unpredictable weather at certain times of the year. And, uh, you know, sometimes the, the weather changes or wind kicks up and uh, you need a rod that's going to be able to perform in those conditions and uh, he's created a line of rods uh, among other types of rods for different types of streams and uh, river fishing but uh, he's uh, made a specific uh, line of rods that he likes to use for the uh, west coast and we're going to be talking about those rods that we use as, long, as well as the lines and the reels that we use and as well as the flies uh, that you'll want to take with you if you do uh, happen to be able to get to the uh, to the Alberta rivers to fish and uh, the rods that we were using on this trip were five and six weight rods um, we were using cane rods and uh, the first rod that we uh, that I brought along with me was this rod here this is a uh, Livingston uh, rod works rod this is a uh, five weight seven and a half foot uh, as you can see it's a very well made uh, rod and it's it's a cane rod that's a three-piece rod, so it makes, it makes it really nice for traveling. So we were able to, uh, I was able to bring that one with me and uh, use this quite a bit on the streams. And uh, also, the other rod that you'll want to be uh, looking at is something a little bit heavier. Uh, this happens to be a 5-6 weight. Uh, this is a cane rod as well. Uh, again, uh, you know, Livingston Rod Works. Uh, Dave Towers created this rod. Uh, this one actually has two separate tips, uh, one for five weight, one for six weight. So you get a little heavier action tip if you need it, uh, especially if you're going to be starting to fish for some uh, bull trout uh, and if you're throwing some uh, heavier flies such as streamers and things of that nature. And we're going to go over a couple of those types of flies as well. And uh, this is a two-piece rod. So, you know, this one needs to be uh, put in a tube um, to take along, but uh, it's well worth it because this is a great performing type of rod. Um, the type of lines that we used on this uh, trip were uh, distance, taper, distance taper lines. Uh, these are airflow lines that we were using and um, we really enjoy casting these with the bamboo rods because the uh, line has a great taper to it. It's uh, a casting line. It's got a longer belly so you're able to uh, present the fly long distances. Sometimes you've got to make those longer casts and you need a fly, uh, a, a line that can cast the fly for you. Uh, in you know windy conditions and uh, on this trip uh, we got into some snow uh, we were also uh, dealt with the rain for a couple of days as well but it didn't stop uh, us fishing because we had the proper equipment heavier rods and uh, lines that were going to perform properly in, uh, in unpredictable weather um, and the airflow line that we're using is the uh, distance taper this is a maximum taper um, super dry one of the new lines that they came out with um, you can, you know, five, six, seven, eight weights, this is the way to go, uh, because it is a, uh, a longer belly line and it performs really, really well under all kinds of different conditions. So, uh, that's a great line to, uh, keep in mind the next time you go, try that line. I think you'll really appreciate it. And it floats very high. So you get a high floating line, so especially for dry fly fishing. Um, it's fantastic. The types of flies that we used on this, uh, trip kind of varied because you can use everything from terrestrials, ants, beetles, uh, stimulated flies um, and then we got into some blue winged olive hatches. We also got into some larger hatches um, which to me look like a green drake. Uh, these were number 10s and 12 uh, flies that we were using on, on the surface and uh, just show you a couple of the different patterns that worked well for us. So when it came to the terrestrials and the uh, and the uh, ants, a uh, fly that had a little bit of a post on it. This is a parachute tie. This is an ant. This one happens to be uh, black and uh, cinnamon. That seems to be about the two colors. So this is a double color on this one with the uh, antron, I believe that would be the wing on that one. And the other pattern that we worked uh, 
uh, you know, I put this fly on a few times and gave it a, a few shots, and I got a couple of fish on this, which is a, uh, a small hopper pattern. This one seemed to work really well. And uh, again, has a, uh, a tuft on the top, so it's easy to see. Antron as well. And um, the other types of flies that work really well were stimulators or anything on the surface that uh, this one's a little bigger fly, so it gets the attention of the fish when nothing else seems to be working. This seems to uh, seems to do the trick for you as well. And uh, one of the uh, other things that we noticed that there was a lot of midges and small flies coming off. So I have a selection of uh, small flies that I tie here. And um, a lot of the times we were getting into some of the blue winged olives, smaller sizes, but we did find that, uh, you know, flies that were in that, uh, you know, 14, 16 uh, size seemed to work really, really well. And then when it did get tough, we got down into some really small midges that were like 18s and 20s and even 22 at one point. Um, but, you know, the majority of the fishing was done with larger flies. The uh, hatches that we noticed coming off were the blue winged olives mainly. We did get into some caddis as well, uh, but the blue winged olives with the clouds coming in and out the way they were, and of course it got really cold and was snowing a couple of times. Uh, so then we got into uh, some of the bigger flies, and I have a selection of larger flies I was using. And um, some of the uh, larger hatches that were coming off. And in fact, uh, there's going to be some pictures to follow this uh, as well, and I'll show you. We're getting into some of the larger, uh, you know, this is a usual tie, they call that, and it's made with uh, rabbit fur, and uh, it def definitely does the uh, does the trick. So we were getting into some of those larger flies, you know, getting into things like this, and it, we were fortunate enough to have that type of uh, hatch coming off at certain times because we were kind of concerned about it because of the weather. Uh, being the way that it was, we didn't think we would uh, be getting into any hatches, but fortunately, fortunately, it did work out for us, and we were able to get into some. And uh, here's another pattern that worked really well. Wings kind of tied up. Very simple ties, nothing too uh, extravagant or uh, complex. And um, we didn't get into really any spinner falls or anything of that nature. Everything was done, so they were just popping out of the water, and fish happen to be taking them on the surface so it worked out really well uh, we did try for some bull trout and uh, when you go bull trout fishing things change up a little bit on your fly selection and uh, we were starting to get into some larger flies flashy flies that move a lot in the water and have a lot of color to them uh, this one happens to be uh, have a little cone head on it and and it's uh, also a very good fly to be using if you happen to go to the bull river in calgary as well these are the types of flies that uh, we were uh, directed to take along with us on that uh, for those types of fish. So you will get bigger rainbows and things on them as well. Cutthroat do eat these as well. Again, this is a flashy fly. Um, you know, there's a couple of different flies out there, sparklers and so on and so forth that work really well. And uh, But the bull trout really want something that's got a little bit of size to it and has a lot of flash in it. That seems to be the types of flies that they're... Uh, that they're after and uh, so you know the grays the black the brown uh, with a little bit of marabou in it um, seems to work really well as well that's a good uh, good pattern and uh, again just go with something a little bit bigger uh, when it comes to the bull trout they want to eat meat and these some of these fish do get very large uh, again you'll need to use your six weight rods or even heavier if you're going to be throwing bigger stuff like this and, uh, you know, when you're fishing Alberta, when the weather is bad and it's windy and blowing, it doesn't stop you from fishing. You just have to have the right equipment to do so. So if you're ever interested in getting a uh, Livingston rod made uh, for yourself or uh, fishing the West Coast or any place whatsoever, uh, me living in Ontario, Canada, we have a lot of streams and rivers here uh, that are fairly large. So I am, uh, you know, using those types of rods on a regular basis. So... It works out really good for the type of fishing I like to do. And you can check out my on my website. Uh, I have some information on there. You can get in touch with me if you're interested in getting one of those rods made or uh, inquiring about uh, what type of rod you might be interested in having done. Anyways, uh, we've got some uh, pictures coming up of our trip, so uh, enjoy those.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that video on fly fishing in Alberta. I really enjoyed making it, and uh, hopefully you'll have a chance to go there yourself sometime and try it. And if you do, uh, keep in mind some of the equipment that we talked about today, such as the type of rods to bring, and uh, the type of line, and of course the fly selection, which is so important. And uh, if you ever are interested in getting a uh, Livingston Rod Works made for yourself, um, you know, if you're looking to get a cane rod built, uh, feel free to give me a, uh, a call or, or you can even uh, email me. My information is on our website at brianoutdoors.com. Check it out and, uh, you know, if you're interested, I'll uh, lead you in the right direction. Thank you very much for watching my video, everyone, and uh, really appreciate it. And until next time, tight lines and straight shooting. Bye for now.